Recently, the world was stunned when Italian Mafia boss Raffaele Imperiale had a change of heart for the government and testified against himself and the underworld. Imperiale is regarded as one of the world's most powerful drug traffickers, with close ties to the Camorra and criminal organizations in both Europe and South America. The revelation broke on Tuesday, after a court hearing revealed that Imperiale had begun the process of becoming a pentito, or crown witness. Which is even more significant as Imperiale, who is well known in the Netherlands, has ties to many infamous criminals, such as Ricardo Eduardo RV, popularly known as Rico de Chilean, and suspected crime leader and murderer-slash-assassin, Ridon Tahi. Imperiale was apprehended in August, in Dubai, and he is said to have given four lengthy statements to authorities since then. But before we go any further, remember to hit that subscribe button for more stories like these. Now, let's start with the history of Raphael Imperiale. In 1974, Imperiale was born in Castellamare di Stabia, an Italian beach resort south of Naples. His father was a wealthy and well-known businessman there, who owned the city's football team, SS Juve Stabia, as well as many other structures in the region. As a child, Imperiale was the subject of an attempted kidnapping. He managed to escape and return home safely, but it is a mystery how. Imperiale also had an elder brother, who died in 1996, and left him the Rockland coffee shop in Amsterdam. There, he would begin his infamous criminal career. Imperiale supplied soft drugs in his coffee shop, but would eventually be involved in large-scale cocaine trafficking with Dutch drug dealer Rick van de Bunt. Also in the 1990s, Antonio Orifice, a member of the Moshe clan, introduced Imperiale to Elio Amato, brother of Raphael Amato, one of the Deloro clan's top drug traffickers. During those years, Imperiale amassed millions of euros as the representative of the Delaro organization, which interacted directly with drug trafficking cartels in Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. The fortune he gathered was such that during a short three months on the run, Imperiale spent 7 million euros, mostly on personal expenses. During this time, Imperiale also organized firearm supplies to the Neapolitan Mafia. He would later relocate to Spain, and then again to the gangster's paradise of Dubai, where he'd help create a drug-related supercartel with the help of his various contacts. Imperiale allegedly collaborated with cartel leader Ridoan Tahi while in charge of a massive cocaine trafficking ring. Tahi was apprehended in Dubai, where the two had been spending time together. He's now on trial in the Netherlands for a slew of murders, attempted murders, and assassination attempts. Despite his attorney's desire for a complete acquittal, prosecutors have requested life in prison for him. Imperiale also belonged to the Amato Pagano Camorra clan of Naples Sagondigliano and was a man of the world who traveled extensively. He spent several years in the Netherlands, where he owned multiple coffee shops which were legally permitted to sell marijuana. While there, Imperiale gathered useful acquaintances and connections who would help him on his ascension through the drug underworld. One of these acquaintances was Rico de Chilean, who was arrested in Chile in 2017 as part of a Dutch money laundering probe. Four years later, he was convicted of running an assassination ring, as well as a money laundering scheme for illicit wealth from the criminal underworld. According to ANP, authorities also recovered two stolen Vincent van Gogh paintings, Congregation leaving the Reformed Church in Nguyenen, and View of the Sea at Scheveningen, when his Italian house was seized in 2016. Allegedly, a Dutch burglar had given him the stolen paintings, which together were worth more than a hundred million dollars. Imperiale later used them to bargain with Italian authorities to reduce his sentence to a jaw-dropping eight years. In the end, however, it didn't really matter. Imperiale never saw the Italian court, and instead went to Dubai, the opulent desert metropolis in the United Arab Emirates. In Dubai, Imperiale found himself at the center of a European narco-alliance that inundated the region with cocaine from South America. Working closely with drug lords such as Daniel Kinahan and previously mentioned Rideau and Tahi, both of whom lived in Dubai, Imperiale was able to control one-third of the European coke market. The DEA classified their gang amongst the top 50 drug cartels in the world. When the cash flowed in, he allegedly spent $500,000 a month on luxury residences and costly hotel rooms. According to Italian authorities, Imperiale was accustomed to the good life, spending over 7 million euros on himself in the first three months of 2020 alone. 
Imperiale also gave his wife 181,000 euros, his brother-in-law 492,000 euros, the latter's partner 30,000 euros, his ex-wife 497,000 euros, and spent more than 214,000 euros on airline travel, including for his mother-in-law. He also spent 200,000 euros on gifts, but his spending was soon to stop. Imperiale was deported to Italy in March of this year, after being detained by officials in Dubai in August 2021. Because the defendant was already facing significant prison time, prosecutors were eager to add to the pile of accusations. Imperiale preferred to repent, as they say in Italy, rather than face justice. He wished to change his situation. By doing so and becoming an informant, Imperiale will also affect the lives of his former associates, many of whom were members of the narco underworld's elite for decades. As an informant, Imperiali knows where the shipments are coming from and where they are going. He knows where bodies are buried across the globe and who ordered the hits. His defection will astound men who aren't easily shaken. It will also assist police in increasing pressure on drug trafficking organizations that have seen their money and influence grow and have become aggressive and brazen as a result. A criminal dossier against the Kinahan connected mafia leader reveals how Imperiale used an encrypted phone network to arrange multi-million dollar narcotics and cash shipments via Europe from his base in Dubai. Dutch media sources RTL News and Follow the Money, which were allowed access to the Italian criminal dossier against Imperiale, have also said that it revealed a vast European smuggling network. The dossier also describes how his gang drove trucks filled with thousands of kilograms of cocaine from North Holland business parks to Italy, where it was distributed to mafia groups in Naples, Calabria, and other places. The documents also show that Imperiali arranged for trucks carrying millions of euros from Italy to Holland. According to Italian authorities, one 2.5 million euro cash delivery was intended for Rido and Tachi's eldest son. They claim that Tahi, who is serving a life sentence in Holland for organized criminal offenses, including multiple murders, spoke with Imperiale from behind bars. According to the documents, Imperiale arranged for trucks carrying 1,556 kilos of cocaine to travel from corporate storage in Holland to mobs in Italy in 2020 and 2021. According to how Gardai assesses cocaine in Ireland, the shipments might have a street worth of 108 million euros. Imperiali spent the majority of his time in Dubai staying at the seven-star Burj Al Arab Hotel, which served as his headquarters for organizing the shipments. Imperiali was communicating with his associates over the encrypted Sky ECC messaging systems, which mobsters believed were impenetrable to security authorities. Due to their trust in the encryption, they communicated openly about drug and cash shipments, and gang members even shared images of how the cocaine was smuggled from Holland to Imperiali. Messages also revealed how 2.5 million euros was in fact sent to Tahi's son in Holland. On February 4, 2021, Imperiali wrote to Tahi Jr. He wrote, Salam, how are you? We shall request that the other man pay for the one mil. Could you please send another token to pay the remaining 1.5 million right away? The token refers to a banknote with a serial number on it, which is photographed by one side and sent to the other. The cash can then only be handed over to someone who is carrying the banknote with the exact serial number. A number of trucks carrying cash arrived in Netherlands four days later and were retrieved by Tahi Jr. partner. He got the first million. Thank you, Tahi Jr. responds to Imperiale. They were sending the messages entirely unaware that the encryption had been breached and the messages were being reviewed in real time by Dutch and French authorities. Prosecutors believe Tahi's eldest son can be considered the second-in-command of his organization. In legal papers filed in a Dutch case against Tahi's former lawyer and cousin Josef Tahi, still partly under his father's wing, he was put in charge of the organization, which included organizing an outbreak or escape attempt for Rado and Tahi, money laundering, and drug trafficking. Despite being incarcerated in a maximum security prison in the Netherlands following his extradition from Dubai in 2019, Tahi was able to maintain contact with Imperiale. According to Dutch authorities, Imperiale ranks on equal footing with Rado and Tahi and manages his own branch, which is primarily concerned with narcotics trafficking. He also acts as a source of information for Tahi Jr. While Imperiale was still in Dubai, he assisted in the formation of a so-called supercartel with the Kinahans, Chilean criminal Ricardo Riquelme Vega, the Balkan mob commanded by Eden Jackanin, and other European gangs, such as the Tahi-led Macro Mafia. 
Leaders of the gangs attended Daniel Kinahan's wedding at the Burj Al Arab, where U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agents were conducting surveillance on the supercartel leaders. Kinahan and Eden Jackanin are the sole remaining leaders of the supercartel. Jackanin was arrested in Dubai in November and was expected to be extradited to the Netherlands to face organized crime accusations, but to the world's surprise, he has since been released. And that's a wrap on Rafael Imperiali's story so far. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more. Comment what you think about Imperiale, leave a like and share this video. Turn the notification bell on too for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.